Hello everyone. Welcome back to .NET Core Central channel. Today I am going to build the ASP.NET Core 3.0 web API application where I am going to use Redis as a distributed in-memory cache provider. For today's video there are three main things I am going to cover. Number one, what is Redis cache and what are the different features of Redis cache. Number two, installing a Redis cache in a Docker container and talk a little bit about the Redis CLI. And number three, building a ASP.NET Core Web API application running in a Docker container and accessing the Redis cache for in-memory distributed caching solution. First, what is Redis? Redis is a distributed in-memory data store. It can be used as a cache and that's where its most popularity is and that's what I'm going to use today. But apart from that, it can be used as a database given it supports transaction. But in terms of database, it can be used as a NoSQL database given that it can have any kind of data structure which can be saved inside it. The next feature which Redis support is also a PubSub engine. So it provides method for publish and subscribe. And just like any other PubSub engine, there can be multiple subscriber subscribing to a topic or channel as it is called in Redis. And then if publisher publishes a message into the channel, all the subscriber will receive it. I personally have not used Redis as a PubSub engine. Uh, I have been using RabbitMQ for a long time and I find it to be extremely lightweight and its user interface which is a web-based one is also very powerful and provides a lot of insight into the individual queues and topics. The next thing that Redis supports is a stream. It was introduced in version 5 of Redis and it uses the same philosophy as a Kafka stream in a sense that there can be multiple subscriber reading into a stream of data at any point in time and at any data point and they can go back and reread or do whatever they want as long as the stream is alive. It also has the concept of consumer group which is first introduced in Kafka where multiple consumers can read part of a stream. I am not going to get deeper into stream as well. I personally have been using either Kafka or the AWS Kinesis stream but I can understand if somebody is already using Redis as their data store as well as cache there might be an inclination towards using it as a stream as well. So as a part of my next agenda let's go ahead and install Redis in a Docker container. So let's start that. I'm going to download the latest Docker image. Once the image is pulled and installed, I'm going to create a container and start Redis instance. I'm going to name it as local Redis. It can be named anything. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export the port 6379, which is the port Redis uses into the local machine. So the container is created. Now I'm just going to do Docker PS to ensure that it's running. Yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is just check the log. And I can see that the Redis is ready to accept connections. The next thing I'm going to do is quickly go through a couple of features of the Redis CLI. So to open the Redis CLI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bash command inside of the container where Redis is running and then open up the Redis CLI. So once I'm in the container, I can just type Redis CLI. And you can see the CLI is open now. The next thing I can do is I can just do get ping. And if it returns pong, that means the Redis is up and running. 
sorry, I just had to do ping. Yeah, and I can get the Pong response back. It's working as expected. Next thing what I can do is I can just set a cache value and get it back. So I can use the set command. And this is the same command we'll be using in the C-sharp code also. It's just that it is going to be in a C-sharp API instead of the CLI. As you can see here, there is a expiration as well, which I'm going to discuss a little bit detail when we get into the .NET code, but I'm not going to pass any expiration right now. So it's going to be in the cache forever. Now I am getting an OK back, which means the cache is set. Now I can just do a get and pass the same key. And here I get the cache back. So the release cache is up and running and it is doing what is expected. Now the next thing is to create a .NET Core application. And then after creating the .NET Core application, we are going to use Redis NuGet package and start accessing the cache. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sp.NET Core web application. And I'm going to name the application as Redis Demo. I'm going to select API, ASP.NET Core 3.0, and here I'll enable Docker support. I'm going to get rid of HTTPS, it's not needed. At least not for the demo. Now the application is created. Next thing I'm going to do is, let me just let the Docker installation be done. Okay, so container is created successfully. Now actually if we go back here, we can see our Redis demo docker is also created by the ASP.NET Core web application. Now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the NuGet package. I'm going to search for Redis. And here I have a couple of options. First is using the stack exchange.redis, which has been downloaded 22.8 million times. And then Microsoft extension for Redis. And that one also internally uses stack exchange.redis. For the time being, I'm just going to use the stack exchange.redis because it has a bunch of API. And I'm using the latest version. So once it is installed, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the configure services and then configure the release. But before that, let's first create a controller. Let's create a controller and let's create a read write action controller. Name it as cache controller. Okay. Once the controller is created, we will be using a get and a post, um, but we'll use just a single get with a single return and a post for creating the cache. So I'm going to delete rest of the method, not needed. For the get also, we'll change the implementation a little bit. Given that we will be passing the key, instead of keeping an ID construct, we'll just read the key from the query string. And then for using the Redis cache, first we have to get the iDatabase interface of Redis. So in the constructor, I'm going to create a dependency on iDatabase of uh, stackexchange.redis. And iDatabase is nothing but the interface which is used for accessing the in-memory distributed data of Redis, which in our case, we're going to use it just for cache. But same thing, as I mentioned earlier, can be used as a database as well, if you want to. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a database start and the method is going to be 
string get and as you can see if I do a dot it's like all possible methods are available in this interface every single thing that is supported by Redis we're going to keep our demo limited to just cache so this is the key based on key I'm returning the string so I'll implement the post later or maybe let's implement it so post is also very similar it's just instead of get it is string set as you can see and here instead of a string I'll take a key value pair And this is as simple as that. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll go back to the startup class and configure the I database and register it in the dependency injection container so that this dependency can be satisfied during the runtime. So, for that, first I'll establish a connection to Redis. For establishing the connection to the Redis channel, I'm going to use the connection multiplexer class and the connect static method of the class provided by the Redis infrastructure. And to the connect method, I'm going to pass the configuration, which is nothing but the IP address of the machine where the Redis is running. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this application, this web API application in my PC without a Docker, in which case I can just use localhost and connect to the Redis cache because I expose the port to the localhost. But if I run this application inside of Docker, then something else has to be done. I'll come to that later, but first let's run as a local host. Okay, once the, once the connection has been established, the next thing I'll do is get the database from this connection and configure it to the dependency injection container. So this will provide the database. At this point in time, since get database is returning an interface I database, this particular reference is not needed. So I can just get rid of this, but this is still returning the I database. So now at this point, if I run this application, I should be able to connect to Redis and should work. So as I mentioned, first I'll run in localhost mode and start without debugging for simplicity okay so the app is running in localhost 5000 which is the default port for sp.net web api now if i call the api slash cache and i pass the key which i initially added which is my key i should get test value back from Redis. And I can see it's working as expected. So this shows that it works, you know, as expected. Next thing what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to just stop this from running. And let me run this in a Docker container and see what happens. So once I start this in a Docker container, and I'm going to be in debug mode so that we can see the exception. 
you can see that it's saying that it's not possible to connect, unable to connect from localhost. It's because we are trying to access a container in this box from another container in this box. Now to do that, the simplest solution is we can do IP config. And from the IP config, we have this Ethernet adapter for Docker Net. If we pick up this particular IP address, go back here and provide this, and now run it back in Docker mode, we can see it's working. Now it's running in 56598, which is the port used by the Docker container. And if I do the same thing, slash API slash, I should get the value. Now we see that the get is working as expected. Now let's try to do a post and then we'll do a get again to see if the post worked properly. And also we'll get into the CLI to check the same thing. So let's first do a post. And for the post, I'm going to use the same URL. make it as post and in the header I'm going to add content type and I'm going to say application slash JSON and then in the body I'm going to pass the key value pair so I'll say key is key underscore one and value is reduce simplicity. So that's the key value I'm going to pass and then I'm going to make a send request. And you can see I get a 200 back. Now let's fast log into the log into the Docker container. So we'll do again Okay, and then let's run the reduce CLI. Okay, now if we do a get and we pass key underscore one, we get the reduce simplicity back. So the post we can verify in CLI as well. And we can see it's working as expected. Next thing we can do is we can go back to the web or we could done do it in the Postman as well, but let's just try it here. Here we can say key underscore one, and we get the really simplicity. And you can see the how fast it is, for obvious reason, because everything is in memory. So this is all I had to show today, how simple and easy it is to use in a container, and then access it from a .NET Core Web API containerized application. Now with the, this database, I'm just doing string get string, string set, but you can use, you know, there are a plethora of methods which are available in it and you can use all of those. Like if you want to set a hash or you want to, you know, deal with geospatial data. And of course you can do things like publish subscribe, which I have not even tried and uh, but this is a handy feature if you want to keep your ecosystem small then you know Redis is pretty good with a lot of things we can use it for in memory cache distributed NoSQL database we can use it as a pub sub engine as well as a stream so you get four major feature which are used today in any distributed system in one application or one ecosystem which is I think very useful that's it for today if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And also I wanted to know from you, what do you think about you know, using the features like PubSub, which 
technology do you use today? Do you think it's worth getting a deep dive into 3D's pop-up mechanism? Similarly for Stream, what do you use today? And is it worth exploring the Stream feature of 3D's as well? So please provide your comment and feedback. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.